All right, so we're broadcasting, broadcasting live. Thank you everyone for attending our demo day. I'd just like to thank everyone uh, for the amazing effort that they put in uh, for demo day. And I'd like to welcome uh, people to our virtual demo room with, um, with Enagos. So I'm Abs, I'm the program director for Startup Bootcamp and the Smart Energy Accelerator. Before we start, just some admin. So if you've got a question for Rajesh, there's a Q&A box at the bottom. So please put all your questions in there. And also there's a chat on the right-hand side as well. So if you've got any comments, any hellos you wanna shout out to, just put those in the, in the chat section. Uh, but before we start, I wanna just welcome um, Rajesh. Rajesh, do you wanna give a bit of a background on, on you? Yeah, uh, I abs. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'm a repeat entrepreneur. This, uh, you know, uh, is my third venture. I have uh, earlier been in uh, cloud-based access control and video analytics domains and uh, solved uh, problems mostly for business customers. That's what brought me to Enagos because businesses are, uh, you know, trying to uh, all become carbon neutral in, in, in the next few years. And it's a very large problem, very exciting, big market and the answer lies in digital. That's what brought me to Enagos. Awesome. Um, and do you want to talk a bit about the Enagos journey that you've had? So why you started Enagos, how the current crisis is validating why you started? Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, the world has kind of decided that, uh, you know, uh, it's important to stop burning carbon the way we burn. So all economic activity has to be uh, rethought and energy uh, is at the center of it. The way we generate energy, the way we consume it uh, has to change. Um, so the grid itself has to go uh, distributed. Uh, that uh, kind of, uh, you know, told us that a distributed grid is very difficult to manage. Similarly, uh, distributed businesses would struggle a lot managing these distributed resources. And we kind of uh, decided that we're going to focus on the business customers who we understand uh, very well. Some of them are large and spread globally. They have uh, very uh, crucial, uh, uh, you know, globally spread out assets, helping them to manage their new energy mix and uh, helping them to reduce uh, carbon footprint look like a very important agenda. So far uh, in the last four years, uh, we've saw, seen some very good validation of uh, this thought process and we we are excited to carry that forward. Beautiful. So as I see as people come in, uh, let me just give a bit of an instruction as well. Um, so we've got two ways to get involved in this room. One is through the chat panel on the right hand side. So if you've got a comment, if you want to say hello, just uh, chuck that in the chat. If you've got a question for, uh, for Rajesh, put it in the Q&A section and we'll, we'll bring those questions up as well. So so Startup Bootcamp is very lucky to have some amazing partners and one of our partners is Energy Australia. So over the three month program, they engage with startups through running POCs to test the technology and the business model. Do you want to tell, a bit, tell us a bit more about the EA POC that you've set up? Yeah, uh, uh, Energy Australia for, for us is a very important uh, partnership we are uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to enter in. Um, they have a lot of business customers, uh, especially multi-site businesses. And uh, uh, well, the larger picture is that, uh, you know, as these businesses develop their own options to um, meet their energy needs, they go green, they develop their own uh, internal capital resources, they buy green power, the energy markets are anyways free. And so um, as an energy retailer, uh, uh, like Energy Australia would have less stickiness with these business customers. So we got together with them and kind of, uh, you know, built a value proposition around uh, providing digital services to businesses to manage those uh, distributed resources, save on their major costs, uh, including uh, heating and cooling load costs, um, uh, build uh, other, uh, other services around their operations and compliance requirements. And I think, uh, you, you know, it would be very exciting to, to kind of uh, see post uh, lockdowns when we actually get into putting, uh, rolling out 
a pilot and seeing how that can bring value to their business customer and then in turn how it can build a business uh, model for Energy Australia and Anogos together. Beautiful. As part of this is the product. The product provides this value. Do you want to talk a bit about the UV bot and what value that creates? Yeah, most certainly. So uh, Yivobot is a, is a software in a hardware. It is a, a, a AI uh, at the edge. There are a set of AI algorithms in it, which help uh, at uh, different layers. So the first layer, it kind of automates all the major loads and kind of makes uh, operating those loads uh, autonomous without any human interference. So in large uh, uh, distributed operations, it, it kind of uh, helps you to reduce your manpower if you're a large business. And uh, uh, then it is a self-learning model, which means that each uh, uh, Yibo bot uh, goes into a learning mode based on the operations time, the, the comfort levels, the, the equipment health, and that in turn uh, becomes uh, a distributed learning model, which is like federated around uh, across all the locations that multi-site businesses have. Together, it becomes a very powerful way to bring in efficiency, run simple demand response programs and give rebates to businesses, help them to automate their captive generation and help them to automate the flow of energy as it goes from their captive generation to storage, to their loads and also to EV charging infrastructure. And the real, secret in here is the technology so the ai at the edge you want to talk a bit about the ai that's in these hyperbots yeah so uh, uh, in fact anagos has a us uh, uh, patent granted for a uh, bot at the uh, uh, which which is ai at the edge and if you look at all the competitors if you look at all the other digital companies 99% of them build uh, ai uh, on the cloud which means the, well, uh, the, the technology is around pulling data to the remote side and then analyzing that. And then, uh, uh, you know, learning from, from uh, uh, you know, the cloud platform on the remote side. As against that, uh, we uh, took a path that, you know, AI should be on the intelligent node where the distributed energy system is residing because uh, then it, it's uh, uh, not only uh, is the decision taking instantaneous because it's localized, but it's also more cyber secure. Uh, cyber security would be a big thing for organizations as they have to manage distributed resources. And uh, also it, it is very, uh, you know, a uh, good way to kind of isolate parts of distributed grids in uh, emergencies or adverse situations as the current one. Uh, and also in case of, uh, uh, you know, fires or, or floods or tsunami, uh, where certain portions of your business need to be isolated so that, uh, you know, damage is prevented. And 100% connectivity is a myth, uh, you know, as uh, uh, there is no 100% connectivity. We are all lucky we have connectivity today. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, you know, distributing the, the intelligence on the edge is is a unique way to, uh, build the resilience that the distributed energy system would need to kind of completely replace uh, today's uh, centralized uh, energy systems. So, uh, thank you for that, Rajesh. Uh, just for people who are attending the room, just a quick, uh, quick uh, instruction. So we've got the chat. So if you want to put something in the chat uh, around any comments, and we've also got the Q and A box as well. So if you've got any questions for Rajesh. We'll be, he'll be happy to answer those. So please put those Q&A in there. Uh, so we, we talked about your product and the technology underlying that product. It'd be really good to talk about one of the case studies that you've had. So McDonald's is one of the customers that you have. Do you want to go through the problem that McDonald's had? Uh, what's the solution that you brought to that and the value that you created? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, so. So McDonald's as a, as a global entity has a sustainability goal to reduce its carbon footprint by 35% by year 2030. And that's a tall order. So going from a 2030 goal to 2050 where they would become carbon neutral. And this goal involves reducing energy consumption, setting up solar 
and then also uh, reducing the energy component of everything from farm to food. Uh, so we came in and, and we looked at their, uh, you know, immediate uh, carbon burn from electricity. Uh, we found that heating and cooling loads is uh, 45% to 60% of their total uh, energy cost. Uh, all these loads are distrib uh, distributed and, and, and so, uh, you know, it's left to the local staff to kind of manage them, bringing Evo bought and uh, uh, you know distributing that intelligence is a great way to uh, to to kind of create a uh, distributed centralized uh, system for uh, HVAC and and uh, uh, helps the customer to reduce uh, 15 to 20 percent on their current electricity cost. Also, some of the McDonald's outlets are setting up their solar rooftop and they are also planning EV charging infrastructure in their parking lots. And so Evobot is the single box they need to kind of automate the entire energy flow of that. Uh, the, 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 the business model for customer is almost like a no brainer. There's, it, there's zero investment cost for the customer. It's a completely performance based model over five years contract with them where we have to save energy and automate all their other energy systems. Uh, so we've got a question in from Lorraine Tai. Oh, thank you, Lorraine, for your, for your question. So Lorraine says, who are your competitors and how are you different to them? Really good question. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, uh, there, there are a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, startups in uh, uh, digitizing energy. And I think um, either the, the uh, competitor is working on the consumption side or on the generation and storage uh, side of of the new energy system. Um, as I said earlier, most of the uh, you know, competitors would, would look at putting intelligence on the cloud because everybody is looking at shifting intelligence on cloud. We come with a very different uh, proposition. We want to build uh, intelligence on the, on the node. We see that strengthening the intelligent nodes uh, you know, on the distributed grid is the only and best and cheapest way to kind of bring resilience on that distributed energy system. And that would make it long lasting, r resilient and, and reliable in different weather conditions. Also, we have to understand that generation in the new uh, way, uh, which is uh, through renewables is intermittent, which means storage plays an important part, which means that as against, uh, you know, uh, 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 the supply chasing demand in the current centralized system. Now the demand would have to adjust to intermittently available supply. And so putting intelligence at the edge uh, would be uh, a very uh, you know, sound way of uh, managing that distributed system. Uh, if you talk of uh, competitors, there are uh, you know, some uh, uh, US-based companies like Carbon Lighthouse, Autograde, uh, Gridpoint, who we see as competitors, not because the technology is same, but because they are focusing on solving the uh, problems of the same business customers that we are doing. Beautiful. Thank you, Lorraine, uh, for that question. So you also talked about your business model being a no-brainer. Uh, do you want to talk about the couple of different business models that you have and how they suit each of the customers that you have? Right. Uh, so when we started, we started, uh, you know, uh, uh, going directly to large corporates in a kind of a B2B business model and uh, customers uh, would, uh, uh, you know, almost not believe that we can add, uh, uh, you know, 20% uh, savings, which goes straight away to their balance sheet. So we found that uh, to cut short the, the discuss discussion and conversion time, it's better if we incur the, uh, uh, the initial investment. And so we went into pure performance based models where all these services are, uh, you know, pegged with uh, the energy saving that happens. The baselining for the energy pretty much happens on last year's bills or there's a, there's a globally established IP MVP methodology, which uh, we support. We have a, uh, our platform has a calculator for that. Uh, and, and that has worked very well for us. Um, now we are trying to grow uh, a kind of a B2B2B model to scale up faster where we would, uh, you know, the middle B would be partners who are energy retailers or oil and energy companies 
or other energy services companies, uh, people, uh, larger organizations who already have the business relationship that we would uh, seek independently. There, I think uh, the model is uh, that we would uh, have a very low capex and a subscription fee, which is like a fixed fee, uh, which we charge to the partners so that the partner can give a demand response or a rebate program if they are an energy retailer or take a performance contract if they are an energy services company. Great. Well, we've got another question that's come in. So for a business like, uh, like yours, uh, like Enagos, can post-COVID situations cause any impact according to yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's so. Uh, that's also a very relevant question. Uh, uh, surely, it does uh, affect. Uh, it would, you know, uh, uh, current lockdown means that it is not possible for us to go and do an installation. Our because we have an edge AI approach, which is housed in a device. The device has to be installed. And it's also the reason why we could not put the pilot with Energy Australia in shape in time uh, for this demo day. Uh, so it definitely affects, uh, uh, you know, but we all hope that we come out of the lockdown soon and that we can uh, get back to uh, doing our work uh, as early as we can. But it's a great time to innovate uh, and, and see if there are any pivots uh, for digital only services or software only services around uh, energy and maybe, you know, um, looking for more problems of the same customer, which could be uh, not just energy related, but related to their operations, their, their uh, compliance requirements. For example, EHS would be, a, would be a direction we would look at. EHS is environment, health, and safety. I think safety has a very different uh, uh, connotation today with, uh, you know, because of COVID. And employee safety would be at the top of uh, uh, an organization's mind, not just employee safety, also in certain segments like uh, uh, food, for example, where customers walk in or retail for that matter, uh, making sure that your customers are also safe in these risky times would be uh, a key concern. And so innovating outside of energy, uh, it's a bit too early for us right now because we're all kind of, uh, you know, absorbing the impact and, and dealing more with the immediate impact. But I think it's a great time to innovate around digital only services. Cool. cool. And talking about how COVID has affected organizations, but we just saw how petrol prices, oil prices are negative in some parts of the world. And one of the customers that you have is Shell. And they're looking at transitioning away from a fossil, fossil fuel um, past to a renewable future. Do you want to talk a bit about um, about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, outside of this program, uh, you know, uh, the other partnership we are testing is with Shell. And uh, uh, Shell, uh, as an organization, uh, also wants to transition to a carbon neutral, uh, uh, you know, existence at 2050, which means in 2050, uh, they would have uh, zero carbon uh, burn as an organization. And because they are selling oil, there's a, that's a huge statement because that means that they would have to do that many counter things to kind of neutralize uh, you know, uh, uh, their, their carbon footprint. Uh, given today's situation where uh, you know, uh, uh, oil prices are going down and uh, 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 oil consumption itself is slated to go down. Uh, for Shell, it is very important to find uh, new business models. With Shell, we started with like the retail gas stations. Retail gas stations are a place for uh, innovation because if they don't innovate, they would become uh, extinct. And uh, as vehicles go EV, um, the, uh, the gas station has to find a reason why EV, EV uh, cars would come at gas stations and, and charge themselves. Um, so Enagos uh, went in and looked at what are the uh, here now problems that a gas station needs to solve. So for example, a gas station needs to prove daily that its underground tank does not have a leakage. So detection of leakage of the petrol on the, in the underground tanks is a daily 
compliance requirement. That's the first thing that Enogos went and did over there. And then uh, we pretty much like automated uh, the, the status of their dispensers, their signages, and also entered their uh, convenience stores where there is a heating and cooling load. And so help them to optimize that. Some of the gas stations are setting up rooftop solar. So kind of uh, uh, integrating that and creating the energy flow that is required. And uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, value proposition for gas station, given the uh, nature of innovation, business innovation that the gas station itself will do in the years to come. We've got a couple of questions um, around um, how are you different from, from Beads? So Beads one of our other startups in our cohort and they've got a sensor that measures five different, uh, different variables. And there's also a follow-on question around the business model and how your business model is different. Do you want to talk a bit about how you're different from Bead? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, I think Bead uh, uh, is doing uh, uh, some uh, amazing work on, on uh, the consumption optimization and, and focusing on uh, building as, uh, as a customer um, as against uh, that, by uh, uh, as, a, as a strategy, uh, we believe that you cannot just optimize uh, buildings in isolation. You have to kind of do combined optimization of buildings in the distributed grid as it evolves. And the reason is that you are, uh, you know, uh, sharing intermittent supply. So the optimization of of, of building load itself is taking on a new meaning. It's not enough that you just look at a building in isolation and optimize it. You have to do combined optimization at a micro grid level. So that's the fundamental difference, I think, in, in, in how we see the opportunity unveiling. But if you look at uh, you know the product or the technology, I think there would be similarities because you are probably taking over control of HVAC system and then optimizing it through uh, adding some AI at some level. Um, uh, having said that, on the product level, also Enogos is on both sides, right? It's on generation as well as on consumption side. It's on storage as well as on EV charging. Wireless Beat focuses more on the consumption side of uh, building loads. Yeah, and Beat's real focus is on digitizing the building. So there's that, uh, there's that differential there yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and, and abs, there is space for uh, for both philosophies. I think the opportunity is big, and 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 uh, uh, there is a big market out there uh, waiting to to kind of uh, you know the time is now. As I said in my pitch, the time is now because everybody got very serious about their 2030 carbon reduction goals. Beautiful. And then in terms of the business model and how your business model is different, be just a square uh, per sensor per square uh, meter. Um, so that's that's their business model, uh, but yours is a zero capex um, sharing of energy savings. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So the business model, I think, is is quite different uh, from from Bead. Uh, we we want to encourage businesses to achieve their goals without having to spend. And our core philosophy is to look for a win-win with our customer. If if we can win when customer wins that's the best recipe for long-term relationships. And we don't want to go in with a customer and do a one-time thing and get out. We want to have a lifetime relationship with these businesses. We want to build a solid contract, which goes into five years and extendable by another five years. We want to be there at 2030 when they have achieved their 2030 goal. So we want to find, uh, you know, more to kind of, uh, um, serve them with services beyond just energy, going into helping them with compliances, making businesses more optimized itself. Uh, for any, any new attendees, uh, if you want to put a question, there's a Q&A section at the bottom, just put your questions in there. And there's also a chat function on the right hand side for any comments. So we, we talked about um, some, some similarities around, um, around B. Uh, there's also uh, one of the things that you're looking for is not just the HVAC system, but you're also looking at uh, like process loads, how Yiverbot could be a great solution for factories, for example. Do you want to talk a bit about how your solution works in a factory setting? 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, App. So, um, yeah, we we uh, you know when we we started with my focus on multi-site customers, and because multi-site customers have some particular uh, type of infrastructure issues, and they have specific type of loads. For example, their HVAC loads are always forty to sixty percent of their uh, total energy costs. So there's a common problem to solve, and we understand those problems well. But having said that, there are businesses are of different kinds, right? So if you're a factory or an industrial customer, like a cement plant or a, or a steel plant, heating and cooling load is not your major load anymore. Your major electrical load is a set of motors and drives. And these are controlled by uh, programmable logic controllers or PID controllers or some other kind of controllers. So optimizing those loads is more about um, you know, shifting those loads in line with, uh, you know, uh, when energy markets are giving better prices or, or when, uh, you know, there is a load uh, tariff time, if, it's a, if, if, if their energy retailer has a time-based tariff plan. And so uh, uh, Hebobot goes in and automates this uh, demand uh, shifting, which, uh, allow, uh, which, uh, which is required to kind of uh, uh, bring efficiency into industrial loads. And how utilities run this is they, they would use Evobot and uh, issue a demand uh, shift program or a peak load shift program and give a rebate to the industrial customer for uh, being able to do that. And of course, it's not uh, you know, to be done by uh, disturbing the, their industrial process. It's to be done by uh, giving them a cue and getting a approval before you execute a command like that. So you need an app for that, you need you were bought for that, you need that data to sync with each other and then you can execute the demand response program. Sure. So if, if there's anyone listening to this who's got some processes in a the factory, then please reach out to, to a Jeff who's got a solution that would really work in that setting. Uh, so there's a few things that you are looking for um, as we move forward in um, so one is um, hardware installations uh, ability, so system integrated. Do you want to talk a bit about, about that and what type of system integrator you're looking for? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we spoke that, you know, Uberbot needs installation to be done. It needs to be connected to the major devices and that needs electrical contractors to go in and, and install. And as we go, uh, you know, into new markets like Australia and, and the US and, and Europe, uh, we need to build uh, system integration partnerships, uh, uh, you know, bring people who understand installations and who can go in there on our behalf. And, and it's one of the things that we need to do as we develop new customers. Uh, this changes uh, a little bit when uh, uh, partners come in because some partners, for example, energy retailers may have uh, uh, the, uh, the technical uh, feet on street uh, uh, readily available, but some other partners may not have that. And so we still need to have a backup of system integration partners. It's something we would look for in Australia and we uh, kind of welcome uh, any, any uh, interested uh, companies who would like to be system integration partners with us. Anybody with a local presence uh, in Australia who is doing this kind of software, hardware kind of solutions would be a good ideal partner for us. On the back of that, there's a question from, from Trevor. Um, how do I get the system installed? Can you can Trevor do it himself? Um, yeah, Trevor, that's a great question. It, it's, uh, we are getting there. I would say we are, we are uh, as we version the products, we are making it uh, DIY as, uh, as much as possible. But uh, we have to uh, understand that we're dealing with a lot of legacy here. When we come to businesses, they have a lot of legacy equipment and these are different makes and types and the interoperability of this is, is kind of limited, which means we have to hardwire many things because they don't have communicable wireless interfaces. And, and so uh, in the ideal world, I, we would uh, like to claim that it is a pure DIY and it's easier to achieve in residential, but in businesses with a lot of legacy, it is a little bit difficult and needs a trained electrical uh, um, a resource to kind of go and install that. So system integrat 
sector partners is one. So thank you for that question, um, Trevor. The other one is you're looking for sales um, as well. So you're taking from pilot to a commercial agreement. There's steps in between to, to get a team to execute, to build partnerships, and all of that takes some growth capital. Do you want to talk about a bit about that and the second part that you're looking for? Um. So in my ask, I said that, you know, we would need to raise uh, some money. So, uh, so the sequence of things is like this. I, I think we, we are, we are uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the stage where we, we can uh, implement some pilots, especially with uh, new partnerships and convert those to successful pilots. As these pilots get into deployment orders, we have to probably build a team depending on the business model, if it's a performance model uh, based uh, uh, deployment order, then we have to uh, put in the investment uh, into that upfront uh, and, 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 uh, uh, and then build the SI partnership. partnership. So this is why uh, you know, I, I said my ask is that we will probably raise some finance to fund uh, the, uh, the inventory and the, and the team uh, that is required to kind of support the uh, partnerships that we create in different markets. Cool. Um, so we've got about 10 minutes left. So any new attendees, if you've got some questions, just put the questions in the Q&A section. And if you've got some comments, there's, uh, there's a chat function on the right hand side as well, if you want to put some uh, put some chat in there. Uh, the other part, so you've got this um, growth capital. If you get the $3 million, what's your plan? Which markets are you going after? Which sectors are you going after? Um, yeah, uh, that's that, that's a great question. So uh, at the moment, we are uh, we want to focus on uh, uh, the west uh, five states of United States. We want to come down right from Hawaii Island uh, into Australia. It's a very important and very progressive market. We have been uh, very pleasantly surprised in this market in the last. Uh, uh, three to four months that we've been there. Uh, it's, it's very progressive. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, very forward looking. And I think it's a great uh, market to kind of validate uh, uh, what we're trying to do. And coming from there and, and uh, coming all the way up to uh, Asia Pacific and then uh, to India where we started from, I think this would be, uh, you know, these would be the markets of uh, focus for the next few years. Awesome. Well, and the sectors, are you looking at any specific sectors that you want to go into? Is it still going to be oil and gas sector or are you looking at broader sectors as well? I think we're going to focus on the multi-site businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, the value proposition for these multi-site businesses is very strong. Uh, we, uh, we, we want to be uh, the leaders there. We want to uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a startup, we don't want to spread ourselves too thin going into, let's say, independent buildings and then uh, other kinds of stuff in the, in the beginning, uh, you know, uh, in the short term, it would be good for us to focus on multi-site and then go into other sectors like industrial uh, after six months. And then one year later, maybe get into, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, for example, the MASH segment. The MASH is the military university school and hospital segment. Mm -hmm. This is a segment which is like, um, uh, has to be always up and running even in uh, emergencies uh, and uh, uh, hospitals, military especially. And uh, uh, so if you treat each of these as campuses which uh, mm -hmm. have microgrids, then making them resilient and fully functional in all kinds of natural emergencies like floods, fires, tsunami uh, uh, is very critical, even COVID uh, currently. And then I think uh, beyond that, uh, the, uh, you know, we would extend it to our larger vision, which is like, uh, you know, creating the intelligent nodes across, uh, 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 creating a mesh of intelligent nodes across the whole planet. So it would take us to, uh, you know, communities, uh, including frontline communities, which are more vulnerable in these emergencies. So I think that's the way we are going to kind of cascade and scale it up, uh, uh, you know, from short term, mid term to to long term uh, vision. What's your time frames around that? From large orgs to mush to to frontline communities? Do you, have you got yeah. an internal t time frame on that? I think, I think six months we would focus on the multi site businesses and then uh, get into the industrial, which is a big segment in business segment. 
and then after one year we would extend our capabilities uh, on the product roadmap uh, to get into the mush segment and then uh, two year horizon would be to get into frontline communities that would be uh, a good solid uh, uh, roadmap penetrating and getting into you know in a three years time uh, in uh, multiple segments so from large businesses taking us all the way to communities Beautiful. Uh, this is a great way to add this final question. Um, so you go from this large orgs to the, to the mush sector, to the frontline communities. So this is all around the network effects that you talked about in your pitch. You wanna, if I'm talking to you again in five years, how has this changed the world? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Uh, yeah, so uh, five years from now, we are in 2025. Uh, uh, businesses uh, have reduced their energy costs by 20, 25%. Um, and they have set up more and more renewables and, and they are, uh, you know, uh, optimizing the entire new energy flow without human interference uh, on its own using uh, YivoBot. Uh, we would like to, uh, uh, you know, be the market leader there in that segment uh, across the world. And uh, um, the, the world has, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the target for the world is that we go completely green by 2050. So uh, uh, what, what I can imagine is that in 2030, 35% uh, uh, of this has happened and Enogos is, is right in the front uh, helping all these uh, distributed energy nodes to become solid and resilient and perform in all different conditions. There's a lot of scenario building we have to do. You have to kind of imagine what happens on a rainy day when solar is not generating and you have to suddenly buy from the market. You have to also imagine the effect on the energy retailer at that time when suddenly without a forecast, it has to cater to more demand uh, from the main uh, grid. And so all these scenarios uh, have to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, considered and, and put as algorithms into the Yibo bot to function and bring the the solidness and the and the reliability that is required for for uh, you know all the businesses uh, to to uh, to shift to make the shift to the new uh, energy system. I, I see Enagos as as being uh, 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 you know uh, a leader in this category, a, a, a real leader, try, uh, making it really possible for global businesses. To have that resilience uh, and and make their energy shift meaningful. Beautiful. That's a great vision. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that that plays out in the next five years. Um, I'd love to thank you, Rajesh, for uh, for your time today, and I'd love to thank everyone who attended demo day uh, and came thank in and asked questions. Um, thank you very much, and we hope you all enjoyed. Uh, enjoyed demo day and we look forward to seeing you at our next Startup Bootcamp event. From myself, Abs, the program director at Startup Bootcamp, thank you very much. And thank you, Rajesh, as well. Thank you so much, Abs. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And uh, uh, stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.